What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the backyard. You might remember a couple of years ago, we put that addition on our house. We didn't learn, we're gonna do it again, and we're gonna put another addition on right back here. So this is going to be a dormer. We're gonna remove that dormer, and the new bigger dormer is basically gonna go from here to that chimney stack and down to about the pergola roof there. And uh, that's gonna be the master bathroom suite of the wife and my dreams. And we're gonna take you guys along for the ride. So this is the first in the DIY Tyler Home series right here. The framing aspect of this, um, we're not actually gonna completely DIY this. It's gonna be a family friend of ours gonna come in for one week and he's gonna help get it watertight as soon as we possibly can. So this is where the addition is going to happen. This is the master bedroom of the house and it is, you'll notice a couple things. It's very dark up here, although the camera is doing a good job of making it look pretty decent in here. But the addition, the dormer addition, is going to go from that wall this way and then it's gonna go from right there out that way as well. So this dormer, this is what we were looking at outside, is gonna turn into one big dormer right here and this is gonna be the new bathroom, which is gonna be in the master bedroom where currently we gotta step outside to a shared bedroom, which is a nice shared bedroom, shared bathroom, which is a nice bathroom. You've seen the vanity that we did in there with the epoxy countertops, that was in that bathroom. So from the corner right here, corner of that box right there, that's gonna be the outside corner of the, of the new bathroom. And we're gonna have a beautiful shower in there. We're gonna have a toilet, obviously, double vanity. And we're gonna have a nice big old window so we get lots of natural light, like like right here. I'm in the other window opposite of this one in the bedroom. And uh, it, while we're doing all that, we're gonna scrape the popcorn ceilings of this. But I hope you guys enjoy it and you stick around for the ride. Let's get started. Gotta say, pretty pleased with myself. For once, I actually remembered to take some nice before shots so that we could do something like this and show you exactly what we did differently to add this dormer on. So it's right over the deck that we added on, I think that was about two years ago now, and uh, kind of integrates very well. The siding is a lot fresher looking, so it doesn't quite mix in perfectly, but hopefully everything will fade consistently. We gotta get rid of some baseboard heat that's in there to be able to bump out this space, but by golly, didn't that turn out pretty well? We are very, very pleased that in this current day, everything is done with the exception of the shower glass being installed, and I am excited to show you guys the process. As with every big project, and honestly most projects, I took to my Google Calendar at first and laid out what basically turns into a Gantt chart so I can try to keep everything on schedule. It was then multiple runs to all the different home centers to get the material on hand before the family Fen Gerard showed up to start demoing things. The first day, it was a little bit rainy, so that was okay because we had to do some demo inside. Again, getting rid of that baseboard register, pulling back the electric, pulling the sheetrock off and insulation, and getting a good visualization of what we actually have to do. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning, this popcorn ceiling has to go. That was a stipulation from the wife, had to happen, and honestly it turned out not to be very difficult, but a very, very messy project. I'm gonna do a little scraping without my respirator on so I can talk to you guys. So, let's see here. So you can see how easy that scraped right there. I have discovered that plenty of water doesn't seem to hurt. So go ahead and add water, even if you think you might be adding a little bit too much, it just helps everything scrape a little bit easier. And as you can see, there's no dust there. Uh, just kind of scrapes off into a blob if you get the right amount of water and you leave for the right amount of time. This ceiling is in incredibly good shape. Not really sure why they added this garbage on here, but I guess the 80s were pretty crazy too. So you can see why you need a drop cloth as well. You can very quickly tell when you get to an area that you didn't wet down because it takes a lot more pressure to scrape and a lot more dust. So the water ends right there. I can show you what it looks like. Let me actually scrape this off. You can see where I was adding a little bit less water right there. Harder to push. But then as I get out here, 
so it doesn't scrape and look at it, it's just this is all dust right here I don't know if you can see it on the camera so you definitely need to make sure you get an adequate amount of water up there and the garden pump seems to be working great the uh, the second trowel here really helps clean up the back side of this blade the one that you're gonna put up against the ceiling again um, right here I didn't have a clean trowel and you can see I've smeared some of that that popcorn putty or cement whatever it was drywall compound is probably what it is back up there again so the second trial really really helps speed things along it really does not take long it's just an absolute disaster make sure you drop cloth very well Well, that was a messy project, but that does wrap up the day one of getting this dormer on the house. Day two, it was time to cut open the roof. Now, we had a exceptionally wonderful weather window. There was one day it looked pretty sketchy like it was going to rain, but the weather cooperated perfectly. So we're very thankful from on high for that good weather. We actually didn't even put a tarp over this at night when we had the window opened, the roof opened. So Gerard and I are just demoing out the trusses. We have a little bit of support up there to make sure the ceiling doesn't sag, which it didn't budge in the least bit. And uh, we did confirm here that this was actually a modularly built home. Uh, different contractors that we've had over here in the past, it was, it was kind of unknown, but we discovered that the, the roof was kind of folded down when the sections of the house were delivered, stood up the roof, and then put the, the cap on to complete. But that's a side note. As you can see, we have the outside walls in place now, and we were able to get maximum room size. So we were able to go all the way to the load-bearing outside wall. Originally, we were a little concerned that we would have to be a few inches inset, but we were able to get the full, full room size that we wanted, which is fantastic. As you can see, we laminated some rafters together there to spread the load, and the header is not over my head right now, but you will see in, a, in another panning shot right here that we have a double 2x12 header into place with all the double joist hangers and single joist hangers to make sure we have a sound structure. I can say in hindsight, having participated in a demolish and a new dormer addition, it is not a trivial task. So big shout out to Gerard, family friend of ours. He runs his own construction framing slash handyman extraordinaire service uh, about an hour north of us. And he was willing to drive down here and help us out to do this project. Big reason why I needed help is... I'm not one to monkey around with a 12-12 pitch roof, and Gerard obviously was very comfortable with that. So I stayed on the ground, made all the cuts for him, handed up material, and he was the brave one jumping around on the roof. Another thing, there's a lot of junk that comes out of a dormer like this. That dumpster that's sitting back there, I thought we would put a couple of inches of material in the bottom. That was chock full, and um, yeah, couldn't fit another piece in there. So as you can see, rafters are going up, the outside framing is done, windows are framed in, and it is looking good. This panning shot right here, we got some sheeting on, and again, was stuff I was able to hand up so we could quickly move right along. I would like to take a quick pause from our dream build here and tell you about a dream build that you could have. This video has been brought to us by Omaze, and today, we have an awesome sweepstakes that I think compares very well with what we're doing here in this project. We've dreamed up this master bathroom, and now we turn it into a reality. Omaze has given you the opportunity to design your very own custom tiny home, valued at $130,000 with Trueform Tiny. Visit omaze.com forward slash DIY Tyler and enter for your chance to win. When you enter for your chance to win, any donations that you do make go towards support of the National Park Foundation. What a great cause. We're woodworkers on this channel. So we want to make sure our forest and our parks are taken care of because we love our hardwood. What a great cause. Again, enter for your chance to win to work with Trueform Tiny and design your very own custom tiny home. Omaze.com forward slash DIY Tyler. Let's get back to this dream build on this side of the channel. Mentioned I had things scheduled pretty well and I had a very thorough materials list. So as Gerard was finishing up the outside and getting it watertight, siding, shingles, house wrap, all that good stuff, 
I moved inside and started putting the plumbing that has to go underneath the floor so that we could put the flooring back in and safely walk back and forth here and build up the interior walls. I ended up doing all the interior walls on my own just because Gerard ran out of time with the week that he was able to work with us, but no big deals. I can build walls all day long and uh, the plumbing actually wasn't all that much. Plumbing turned out to be more expensive than we originally budgeted, but there's just so many pieces. Right now I am drilling holes for the drain and vent line that will go across the bathroom and over to the sinks. So we wanted to put the toilet and the shower drain as close to the new plumbing stack that's going to go in so that we didn't have to cross any joists because we couldn't drill a big enough hole for a toilet in the joist and stay up to code. But the one and a half inch pipe for the drains was able to go across with plenty of pitch, no problem. Tied all of that drain line together and added the half inch pecs across which will feed the sinks which will go along that wall. All stuff that will be built on this channel later. Now I skipped over some of the interior walls because you know time just gets away from you but what I'm doing right here is going to be the one one side of the shower wall which is also going to be the opposite side of like the throne room, the toilet niche area. And if you look down in the corner there, you will see that I have a majority of the underfloor plumbing already done. We'll go into a little bit more detail of the plumbing in the next rough framing video. Uh, and you also see behind me right there is the, the out exterior wall. And that has a, a big opening, right? And that's because there's going to be a pocket door in there. And I'll go, I'll have a video specifically for that pocket door uh, because those are slightly tricky to install, but very nice to have. I'm making sure that everything is super square in this room because I'm going to be the one doing the tile and I want to make sure that is a spectacular job. And um, I do got to say, everything was really, really square from the rough framing that Gerard did and uh, very, very pleased with it. Here's a panning shot of the space with the interior framing done, although that one little wall between the shower and the toilet is missing, but you can get the gist of it. We have the current bedroom right here, and then this is the new bathroom with the plumbing ran underneath the floor and popping up right here where the sink is gonna go. Alrighty guys, popping in here real quick to wrap up this video, this part one of roughing in the dormer right here. Current day, we're waiting for shower glass because we're not going to put a curtain in front of that shower. And this thing is completely done. We have been using this for a couple of weeks now and it's awesome. So definitely make sure you subscribe. Go check out omaze.com forward slash DIY Tyler again for your chance to win customizing something just like this, that tiny home. And uh, thanks. Make sure you come back for all the videos that we have coming up. We got a wonderful tile job. We got a beautiful vanity to build with a tile counter. Pretty sweet. Anyway, we'll see you guys next time.